Hi, this is Dan from Yukon HKN, and today we'll be doing a video on three-phase power. So three-phase power is how power is distributed across distances. So I'm just going to draw an example circuit here. Now these circuits always look really messy, really ugly. However, they are actually pretty simple to understand once you get the basic concept. All right. So the idea behind three-phase power is that each of these three sources are sending the same magnitude of voltage. However, they're all phase shifted. Let me just redraw some of this. So this will be VA, VB, and VC. And drawing this as a phasor diagram, we consider VA to be zero phase. This is our reference. This is our VB. Same magnitude, but the phase is minus 120 degrees. And VC is minus 120 degrees of, v, uh, of VB. So it's the same thing as plus 120. So here's VC. And these phasors will rotate in this direction. Now, when solving a three-phase circuit, the ideal situation is that these three loads are all equal. In that case, what will happen is the current across each three of these lines will be equivalent. Now, that's ideal, but that doesn't always happen. For that reason, we have this fourth wire right here which I'll label. This is our neutral. Now, if you look at an overhead power line in your neighborhood or on the high voltage transmission line, you'll notice that uh, it's four cables. So one for each phase plus a neutral. Now, the whole point of the neutral is that, say, five amps is coming down here, three amps and two amps is clearly unequal the neutral line allows current to pass through it so that uh, circuit elements aren't damaged by the unequal current. So we'll uh, go over the way you'll solve for currents and therefore voltages and powers in these three phase systems. So I'm going to label this voltage that is our uh, voltage of interest as V. So to find V, well, first off, I guess I'll explain a little bit of these um, terms. So usually, these uh, this isn't listed as one. Uh, you'll usually not see these drawn as one big uh, impedance. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that these each of these components represents a different part of the distribution scheme. So this first resistor and inductor represent the wire, so the high voltage transmission lines. Uh, since they're not perfect, they'll have some resistance and some inductance. The next one here usually is the lower voltage distribution grid. Uh, so what's running along your street? And the last one will be your, um, your actual load. So you can see this as these being the lines, the, the high voltage lines that you see running over fields. This is the, neighbor, the neighborhood lines. And this is you know a house or a business, whatever it is. Now, what's, um, what's important is that these don't necessarily have to be inductors. I mean, these this almost always will be. 
but you can uh, have these as your load as inductors and capacitors. Um, but for sake of, uh, you know, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw as, a, as an inductor. When redrawing it, usually, what we'll try to do is simplify each line because it doesn't really matter which element is which for when we're solving for currents. When we're solving for power, it will, but not right now. So, say I had 1 ohm, uh, J0.5, uh, another 1 ohm, uh, let's say 10 ohms, and J5. So what I would do is I would first just sum up all of these. So this is the same as if I had this for sake of calculation and so on, so on, so on. We're only working on phase A right now. So this would be the same as 12 ohms plus J5.5. And we'll do this for all three phases. And once we have all those three, then it becomes uh, an actually a pretty simple, just a node voltage problem where we'll have, I labeled this one as V because it's our, the only voltage we're solving for. We'll have V minus 120, or I wrote 120 because that's uh, usually the standard you'll see out of coming out of your uh, out of the wall outlets uh, but we'll be specific we will be less specific we'll do uh, V minus VA over the impedance A so ZA plus V minus VB all over ZB and you guessed it V minus VC all over ZC now VB and VC, these aren't strictly real, so these will have some imaginary component, uh, but that doesn't really matter. This all obviously all equals zero. It just makes the calculation uh, complex. Um, and when you do the, the algebra for this, you're going to get our V of interest equals VA over ZA plus VB over ZB. And then this will be over the equivalent. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. Now, when you think about this, it makes sense from an Ohm's law perspective. So our guiding law is our V equals IR. At the top, we'll have our uh, current, because voltage over resistance gives us current. And we're dividing by the equivalent, or we'll be multiplying by the equivalent resistance. Because as we know, uh, if we have A, B, and C, 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C, the inverse of all of that is our equivalent resistance. So instead of this final 1 over, I just made it a division. So in that case, it'll be I times R, and that'll give us our V of interest. So once we have our V of interest, that makes solving for these three currents an absolute breeze. We just do VA minus RV over ZA, so on, so on, so on. So I could rewrite it as VX minus V all over ZX. And so that gives us each current. So we'll do this with VA and ZA, VB and VC. And once we have these three currents, we can find the neutral line current, um, which is a very, very simple calculation. Our neutral current is just equal to the negative of the sums of the three currents.
which makes sense because if in a perfect world, in a perfect situation, all of these uh, currents were equal, it would give us zero neutral current. But if they're not equal, we'll have some current flowing backwards this way. Um, and the last problem that you'll typically see with these kind of three-phase circuits is try to find power dissipated, which is, uh, again, we'll just be using our Ohm's law. So our power for an element that'll be dissipated, our complex power, will be the magnitude of I squared times our impedance, whatever we're, uh, our impedance is that we're interested in. So say we're interested in right here, interested in the power dissipated here. So our example in that case would be IA squared magnitude times 10 plus J5. And that will give us the complex power consumed by this load. If we wanted to do it by the entire line, by this entire system, not just the load, it would be instead of 10 plus J5, it would be our 12 plus J5.5, and accounting for all of the lines as well. But uh, yeah, really, these are the major uh, problems that you'll see regarding to three phase power. You'll usually try to find. Uh, you'll start off with finding the equivalent resistances of all of these sums, and then you'll try to find the current, the uh, voltage at this point, and use that to find your currents. And uh, once you've got your currents, you could find your power, you could find neutral current. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, these circuits certainly do look very messy. You see a lot of uh, circuit elements in series that aren't combined. It looks ugly until you start combining them and you realize it becomes pretty much just three sources and three impedances. So it's not as bad as it looks. Um, good luck in circuits one. Uh -huh.